What's up, mathletes? You are about to witness what happens when factorials and factoring combine into one awesome problem of awesomeness. And if you don't know what either of those things are, this really isn't gonna be the video for you. Let's check it out. All right, so we're being given the following expression, n factorial divided by n minus two factorial equals 30. And we're being tasked with solving for n. Now this is gonna be challenging because I can't simply ignore the fact that I have a factorial. Factorials really complicate things. If you don't know anything about factorials, I would recommend checking out the linked video because you can't really solve this problem without an understanding of what I'm gonna do here. And I'm not going to explain factorials in depth because I really just wanna show you how to solve this problem, assuming you have an understanding of factorials. All right, so the first thing I wanna do is I want to look at this n factorial and I don't like the fact that there's a factorial in this equation. So I'm going to apply my understanding of factorials to sort of get rid of the factorial. I'm going to do that by saying, well, I know by definition n factorial is the product of n times n minus one, or the number right before n, times n minus two, or the number two positions before n, and so on. And I'm going to indicate the so on by just putting a times and a dot, dot, dot because this really continues on forever. I'm gonna do the same thing with the denominator, n minus two factorial. So when I divide, what I have here would be n minus two, and I'm gonna multiply by the number that would have come before n minus two, or in this case, n minus three. And I'm gonna do that and continue on forever until I get down to one, just like I did with the top, right? The dot, dot, dot means and so on. Now I can't forget that this is still equal to 30 and somehow I can't help but feel like I've made this equation worse. I don't really feel like I'm anywhere close to solving for n at this point, but here's where things get really interesting and really exciting. For those of you who like canceling things, you should see that what I have on top is n times n minus one. I'm multiplying by n minus two times and so on. On the bottom, I actually have the same thing. I have n minus two times and so on. Everything from here on should cancel with everything from here on in the numerator. So when I do that, something really beautiful happens. All this stuff kind of just disappears and I'm left with an n times n minus one. Now that's something I can work with. I've got rid of all of my factorials and I'm really, really close to being able to solve for n here. So what I'm gonna do is just kind of clean this up a little bit. I'm gonna just erase all the stuff that I canceled and I'm going to just leave myself with n times n minus one and that's all gonna be equal to 30. So remember, all I've done so far is just applied my understanding of factorials to write n factorial as n times n minus one times and so on. Same thing with the bottom. I've canceled everything that is not n and n minus one. So I'm left with this kind of simple equation, n times n minus one equals 30. And at this point, you should feel kind of comfortable with what you're seeing. n times n minus one, I might as well simplify this and just sort of distribute the n into the brackets, resulting in n squared minus n that's gonna be equal to 30. Now, if you have any understanding of quadratics, this should get you excited. I have an n squared, that means I'm working with a quadratic equation here. At this point, you really should just be able to apply your understanding of solving quadratic equations. I can bring the 30 over to the other side by subtracting. Because I'm on a whiteboard, I'm just gonna erase that and put an equal zero over here. All I've done is move that 30 over to the other side by making it negative, resulting in zero on the right-hand side. Now, as promised, I'm gonna throw some factoring at you here. Now, I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on the factoring process here because I feel like that's sort of a foundational skill you probably have if you're watching this video. If not, I'll link a video here which will walk you through that factoring process just to practice those skills before you attempt this problem. But what you should see here is that if I take negative six and I add positive five, I'll end up with negative one, which happens to be the coefficient in front of n. And if I take those two numbers and I multiply them, I should also get negative 30. So negative six and five are the two values which satisfy my two conditions for factoring this trinomial. Now at this point, it's really just a matter of finding the n values which make each set of parentheses equal to zero. That should be pretty simple. Looking at this one, I can see that n equals six should be the value that makes this zero. Looking at this set of parentheses, I should see that n equals negative five will make this set of parentheses zero. And so I've determined two solutions to this equation, but what I do have to do is consider the original problem which contained factorials. The factorial operation is not defined for negative values. I'm not gonna get into why that is here, but I can't take negative five and multiply by each value less than it until I get one. That's just not really how factorials work. You can't apply the factorial operation to a negative number. 
So I'm gonna say that this solution is inadmissible. That leaves me with n equals six as my only solution to this equation. Now, you can check your answer by taking n equals six, sticking it in for n in the original problem, applying the factorial operation here and here, you'll see that you get 30. So we successfully solved this equation. Now, people who go nuts for factoring and factorials really, really enjoy these problems. I feel like there's not that many people out there like that, aside from you know myself and a few other math teachers and a few keen students. But if you found this video helpful in any way, please subscribe to the channel. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments and I'll be sure to check them out. Thanks for watching.